So part C asks, find the absolute minimum on F on the closed interval negative 6 to 5 and justify the answer. So we're going to justify this answer based on the candidates list. So we're going to make a candidates list. And that candidates list needs to include the endpoints. Okay, so negative 6 and positive 5, which I put in here. In fact, we can just plug in those values. We calculated this here. And I made a mistake in part A. It should be 7 minus 4, which is 3. So f of negative 6 is equal to 3. And the other endpoint, 10 minus 2 pi, works out to be 3.717 approximately. So I'm going to put those in my table. So at the endpoint negative 6, it was 3. And this is 3.717 approximately. So then we need to then consider the other points, and that, that's going to be our critical points where the, where the slope is equal to zero. Now, when we take a look at our slope chart, we can kind of see that we don't really need to consider negative two, although I'm going to put it in my candidates list. Really, we need to check the positive two. So putting those in, I'm going to have negative two. So to calculate the y coordinate negative two, well, that's just going to be the starting point which is, which we were given as positive seven, which was defined. And at two, we need to then start at seven. So I'm gonna write the integral for this. So f of two is equal to our starting value of y equals seven plus the integral from x is equal to negative two to positive two of f of x dx. And then that area works out to be 7 plus. That represents the circle, half circle underneath, which we worked out to be negative 2 pi. So that represents the area or the displacement. So we end up with 7 minus 2 pi. And 7 minus 2 pi works out to be approximately 0. This is approximately, for, I'll just write this out, 7 minus 2 pi. This is approximately 0 0.717. Okay, so I'm going to put that in my candidates list, 0 0.717. And those represent the, the points that I need to check. So looking at the candidates list, then, the absolute minimum is going to be the lowest point. So the absolute minimum is going to occur at x equals 2. Okay, so the absolute minimum... is at x equals 2, y equals approximately 0.717. Part D says for each f double prime of negative 5 and positive 3, find the value and explain or explain why it does not exist. So when we talk about the second derivative, this means the slope on f prime. Okay, so if I take a look at the f prime graph at negative 5, at negative 5, right about here, the slope is negative, and that's a straight line. So we can see that the slope is going to be negative 2 over, uh, looks like negative 2 over 4. So slope on the f double prime at negative 5 is a, equal to the slope on f prime at x equals negative 5, and that gives us a slope of negative 1 half. The second derivative all at x equals 3, well, this is, again, the slope on f prime. So when I take a look at the slope on f prime, well, that's a kink, okay? That's a bend in the graph, so the slope cannot be defined on that point. So this doesn't exist, okay, because not smooth and continuous. Okay, so then we can, we've justified why it doesn't exist, and we've calculated the slope based on the slope of the f prime graph. So looking at this, the marking scheme, okay, for C, we've, we have a candidates list, and we work out the absolute minimum value. We consider x equals 2, 
okay, as our as our candidate, and then we also have to show our endpoints as our in our candidates list for justification. So those are the two marks for there. For D, you just need to calculate the F prime at negative five, and we need to show that it doesn't F prime at uh, sorry F double prime at negative five, and the F double prime at three doesn't exist. And we can say just say that basically it's a kink. In this case here, they gave a limit argument for that.